the Jewish people I know that that tie into history have uh, such a, 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 a kind of like the relationship we as black people have with America. It's a it's not it's like, yeah, some opportunity here, but it also very recognizing the, the, the pain that this nation has caused because America on one end was definitely supporting the allies, but America on the other end was very supportive of the Nazi regime itself. Mm-hmm. And even after the fall mm-hmm. of the Nazi regime, mm-hmm. many of uh, it's, it's just known uh, a mm-hmm. lot of our military intelligence, NASA, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of our engineering, many of the the scientists and people that work and engineer a lot of these poisons, gases, mm-hmm. um, uh, chemical warfare come from Nazi Germany to places like California, uh, you know, Ohio, uh, mm-hmm. New York, mm-hmm. uh, definitely, you know, we aid in the bit Argentina and many mm-hmm. of these other places across the world. Mm-hmm. But here in American grounds, it's been a, 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 a connected relationship. And this puts a lot more into perspective, even just seeing that the foundation mm-hmm. of a lot of NATO dealt with that yes in fact uh, uh you know w- sometimes when you talk about it people w- want to where you get this information from right yes and uh one thing i'd like to uh say before i go on is that there the, there's an outstanding book that was put together in 1986 it was published called blowback and that's the main word of the title by uh Christopher Simpson. He's a professor at uh, American University in Mm -hmm. uh, the Washington, D.C. area. And he Mm -hmm. spent years in archives doing freedom of information requests and interviewing people who were top uh, officials of it. There was already some public record because of congressional investigations. How how did these war criminals get in the United States, you know? Uh, There was uh, investigations. There had already been stuff written about that. But it, this went beyond how did this war criminal or that war criminal or project paperclip that brought in the scientists. He went much deeper into the whole infrastructure. And, you know, basically this is the story is that the United States recruited uh, basically the, the top intelligence and command operatives of the Third Reich from the German general staff, from, um, the guy who headed – intelligence operations on the whole Eastern Front, where he was uh, networked and employed these SS units that were based, uh, that were Hungarian SS, they were Bulgarian SS, Romanian, the Iron Guard, uh, Valerian Trifa, the guy that got evicted from the United States that was out in Grass Lake, Michigan. Uh, he mm-hmm. was a head of, one of the heads of it. Uh, he, he, this guy was in command of all of this and knew, knew the whole network. And if if he, when you're doing that work, that means that you're o- you're over the uh, um, all the uh, mass murder operations, you know, because mm. that's what these legions were used for in part, wow. especially in the Ukraine. And the main murder operation there was something called the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, which it, this is which is why what ties this discussion to the current events today. Because the organization of Ukrainian nationalists was um, was uh, m- was milit- militantly violent. They were at least as violent as the Nazis themselves, uh, mm. German Nazis, and uh, in some cases more. Um, they would go into uh, Polish. They hated Poles. They hated Russians, and they hated Jews. Mm. And uh, there was never anything wrong in any any. Uh, O-U-N's mind if you just went up and killed somebody if they were Russian, if they were Polish. And um, and, and during World War II, they formed uh, their own army. It was called the, by the acronym UPA. Uh, they formed battalions that marched in to Germany with the Russian invasion in 19, June 30th of 1941. Um, they, then they formed large armies. Uh, they had, uh, you know, somewhere near a hundred thousand uh, men in arms, all equipped by Germany, and um, they were running brutal operations. They 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 not only uh, fought the, the Red Army and the part Red Partisans, but they would just go into a Polish village and every man, woman, and child they would just gut them and rip their bodies apart. Mm. 
uh, they wouldn't shoot them in the head. They would rip their bodies apart. Oh. Um, and uh, just just horrendous uh, kind of operations. And, uh, you know, when they marched in with the German army, the first thing they did was round up the Jews. And it, this march in started at the city of Lov, L-V-O-V. And uh, the first thing they did is they round up the Jews, and within a matter of days, 7,000 are, you know, murdered in, in mass graves, you know, mm -hmm. mass pits and stuff like that. That That's the organization of Ukrainian nationalists. And and I, uh, and I the most militant wing was the Bandera wing, headed by a guy named Stefan Bandera, uh, who, was, who was like just uh, obsessed, uh, obsessed and crazy and uh, militant and uh, had some, apparently some charisma like Hitler did. But these are the people that the, the, were under the control of a guy named, a general named Reinhard Galen. And Galen brings this whole apparatus under U.S., uh, into the U.S. control. And it became known as a shorthand as the Galen Org. But it was funded by the United States and uh, they put put them up in operations in uh, in Germany uh, after after the war in uh, the Bavaria area, as I recall. That's where they set up Radio Free Europe, mm -hmm. and then they used the funding for Radio Free Europe to fund all these uh, Nazi groups. Uh, they brought they set up displacement person camps and brought had all all the people who had to escape uh, the red army because they were nazis or were sided with the nazis they put them in these camps screened them and placed them either in, from anywhere from argentina to the united states sometimes in spain sometimes in syria uh, and they didn't just recruit the arms section uh, they they recruited people who were part of adolf eichmann's extermination campaign as you know, Hitler devo devoted resources to just rounding up Jews, putting them on railroad trains, and putting them in into the death camps. Mm -hmm. And so those people were not, you know, shooting rifles on the Eastern Front. And they recruited some of the top people who were running that operation. Why would you get somebody whose only specialty is organizing mass murder? Mm -hmm. But they did. Mm -hmm. Alois Brunner was an aide to Adolf Eichmann. He was put in Syria as an operative for the CIA. Hmm. Um, that's an example. Um, and so this whole evil apparatus, not evil individuals oh, as such, the whole apparatus was recruited into the CIA. And it was net, networked and housed in, in Franco, Spain, because Fr Franco was an out. His whole government was created by fascist Italy and Nazi Germany in 1936-38. They overthrew the Spanish Republican government. And there was a civil war. The Germans bombed Guernica. There's a famous painting about it. They, they took over Spain. And they used Spain as the lead-in to penetrate the Western Hemisphere for, uh, from the Mexico down to Argentina. Mm. And uh, that was its entry point. And that's why it was so important to them to take Spain. And they used it for housing all these uh, Nazi operations after World War II wow. that weren't into the Western Hemisphere. Uh, uh, you know. And so it was, uh, it was just, uh, just it's, it still bothers me today, you know, because uh, all the price that so many paid and all, all that loss – and for them to cynically make a power play to say, now we're going to take over the Soviet Union, you know, because they thought, well, we, you know, we conquered Europe. Well, they, they conquered it maybe three or 400 miles, <laughs> but they didn't conquer most of Europe at all. <clears throat> and uh, they, they thought they were going to take over the Soviet Union and, uh, and, and the whole heartland of Europe, which was considered East Europe, not, not France. N not Italy, but mm -hmm. the whole uh, eastern uh, part of Europe. And so uh, that's how it went. And there were Nazi collaborators in the uh, British government, uh, you know, that, that emerged after World War II. And M MI6 and the British intelligence were part of it. Mm -hmm. And so most of the Nazis surrendered either to the British or to the Americans. Wow. And that's how, that's how it went down. And... Uh, 
and uh, and they, then they used all these operations throughout Latin America. They reactivated. They had these Nazi cells mm -hmm. all through Latin America, and they used them uh, for forming death squads uh, that still operate to this day.